A few months ago, George was asked to remove some boar from farmland in Sussex. He shot three youngsters. One he generously donated to Roy Lupton to do some penetration tests. The others are for the freezer and sausages for the guns on George's shoot days. George's family ran a butcher's shop on the south coast for many generations, so Mr Digweed knows his way around a butcher's block, and today we are filming him cutting up and jointing this wild boar. Well, the, the family business was butchery. We, uh, we had a family business that was established in 1860 in Hastings. Um, I was last in line, um, and eventually in 1993 decided that I was going to pursue a career in um, the shooting industry, mainly the clay target shooting industry, but uh, I love the fact of still being able to keep my hand in. I don't enjoy this bit quite so much, but I enjoy the cutting and the presenting of the actual main carcass, which uh, for any any craftsman is uh, the tools of their trade, so to speak. One thing I did have when the shop packed up is this is my old block that I used to use at the shop. So it's a, an old wooden beach, uh, beach block where uh, it's on an oak stand and all of the, uh, all of the main part of the block is uh, these beach cubes which on end are the strongest wooden material you can get when you're chopping down on stuff all the time. It, it's been proven that it lasts the longest. Yeah, all of the all the knives here came out of the shop, and we haven't had the shop since '93. So, um, you know, it's uh, I don't do huge amounts of work with them anymore, but uh, but I do enough. And uh, as long as you keep an edge on it, and you know how to sharpen it. It's uh, it's fine. And I wouldn't normally use I wouldn't normally be in my house in an overcoat, but. I'm trying not to cover myself in as much blood and fur as as is humanely possible, so I thought I'd wear an old coat. As you can see, I'm having to make every cut. Um, if you do a deer, it'll pull away, but with this, you have to make every single cut. They do create a huge amount of of damage when they when they come in and take up a residency. Um, and like anything, it's great in moderation, but they do have to be controlled. And uh, and I have to say that when I see you know what runs around locally uh, and how they you know, go about trying to control these majestic animals. Um, I am quite happy to do it myself because I believe that, you know, I'm good enough to put, good enough to put the bullets where I want it. And, um, you know, I'm capable of doing a job where it's effective and efficient and, and uh, there's no suffering involved. It's uh, it's also a fine line when you're doing this, as to trying to obviously keep as much meat and fat on the uh, on the animal and, and not leave it all on the skin and it be wasted. Um, so it's a it's a little bit of trial and error as to where that goes. I don't think I've done one of these yet and not felt at the end of it that I could have done better. You'll get cut with a blunt knife, you won't get cut with a sharp one if you handle it properly. It's when you start using an instrument that you've got a force. So if you're uh, if you're having to force your you know that cuts that knife butter there 
Uh, if, if I was having to force that down, um, you know, the knife can slip and go anywhere. You can also see the quality of the of the bore, the amount of fat that's coming coming off this side of it. So you know, it's in really good condition. I normally like to try and shoot one or two at this time of year, and um, I repay a few favours with joints. We have a few joints and bits and pieces for home, and then we use all of the four quarter meat for sausages. Um, we've got a, a guy that makes some fantastic sausages for us, um, and he. Uh, he makes them to a traditional, he's a butcher, makes them to a traditional um, sausage recipe. Obviously we used to make thousands of pounds of sausages in the shop, but um, I haven't got the facility to be able to do that anymore. So this guy uh, makes it for us and they do a fantastic job. And then, which is, you know, what I think is a very nice touch is we were able to um, we we're able to produce the sausages and then Kate does them for elevenses um, on our shoots so it's always quite a nice touch to have a wild, proper wild boar sausage at elevenses that I've shot myself so if they ever want to hear the story behind it it's not just a you know another sausage See, there's no seams on these at all. Normally in another animal you'd have a seam that you'd be able to cut down and follow the seam line. Whereas with this I'm cutting and it goes just straight back into the body of the animal normally. Okay, so here we've got the carcass. Um, really good condition, as you can see, nice and clean. No damage to it at all. Um, this area of fat in here is what the, the trade would class as fleed um, and uh, pork fat which uh, is used for making um, you know very fine pastry um, which is is always most sought after was obviously domestic pigs rather than wild boar um, and what I'll do now is I'll, I'll cut it as we would normally cut a domestic pig so I would start off by cutting the leg <laughs> cutting down and then just up the side of the tail so that gives us our first leg obviously we then Carry that over onto the second leg, making sure everything's straight. And we cut down through there. That is the tail. And we take that off. There you have your two legs. So nice joints. This area here is the chump, so that would be the start of the loin, So, and this would be the belly. So I cut up through the belly here, turning it round. Obviously people would be synonymous of that in a lamb as a breast of lamb. Well, that is uh, that is the belly. What would you do that, George? Pardon? Would you at 
leave that as a joint there? Leave no, I, I, you could you could roll that. You could roll that, or probably what I will do, because it's such good quality fat, you know, tender meat, is I'd probably put it in the sausages. So is there a natural level along the ribs when you go? Yeah. So it's just, just you know, you can take them as short or as long as you want it depends on you know what you would like to leave on the what you would like to leave on the loins obviously everything that comes out from the loins is on the tail of your loin but you wouldn't class that as loin meat um, you wouldn't class this as loin meat but you were also it's good meat now we're going to take the shoulders off and I would go six bones from the front. So the first rib starts there. One, two, three, four, five, six. So six bones there. And you cut down in between the ribs. There. And obviously you turn that over so it's going to level up on that side. There's your four quarters, that's the two shoulders. You can see there where the bullet went. Absolutely perfect neck shot, completely, you know, it's an instant, an instant uh, result. So that I would put to one side and I would bone now for sausages. And then here we have the loins. I'll just take out this little bit of blood damage around the kidney. And then I'll come back. The last rib is there, so I would come back to here that through there obviously it's all a game of lines again keeping the lines straight you cut that off and there's your you've got chops should you want them and there's the start of the loin which is the obviously the most vital part the most prestigious area and we'll just take out this little bit of vein membrane there which is not much good in here you have the kidneys absolutely delicious Take out that's the first one. That's the second one. And then you have the most expensive part of any animal, the fillet. fillet that it's got a young pig but that would be you could almost eat that raw I should think and take the other one out here it is the tenderest part because 
uh, it's under no stress. So obviously this is a piece of meat in here, it's under no stress, it doesn't really serve any purpose for the animal. Um, whereas all the others are muscle tension and everything working on them and for them and that sort of thing. There's two lovely pieces of meat there. I'll just give this a quick touch up if I can find my steel. Oh, there. And then what I'm going to do now on this particular animal is I quite fancy the steaks off here. So I'm going to bone comes out and goes back the chump bone it's quite difficult to feed round this obviously the more meat you leave on the bone here in a paid environment the more profit you're losing So you refer to them as steaks, so they, that would be, if you're talking about a, a cow, this would be what? This, is, this would be, obviously this area is rump steak and this would be sirloin steak. And I will show you what I mean when I cut the steaks in a second. What do you think people's biggest mistake is with sharpening knives or trying to keep a knife sharp? Um, they put a shoulder edge on it, you know, the, uh, an edge has to be fine and people probably take that flea out. This will just peel out on a seam. Now that can go in the sausages. And there you have, which we'll do in a minute, we'll cut some steaks. And that. That's one side of it. I'll peel this other side out now. That's the second side. So that's that horrible little angled bone that has caused a lot of people to lose a lot of money over the years. Coming down the other side of the backbone there. That's about as clean as you're gonna you're gonna get anything off there. And you've got another loin here, which you can roll and 
do whatever you need to do with. Here we come on to, now you can either have these in chops or a small joint. This is obviously the end of the shoulder blade, which we just take those two little bits of gristle out, like that. For me, it's just so easy to And then you have, yet again, obviously a roasting joint of solid meat, which is just absolutely perfect. It looks good enough to eat now, doesn't it? Let me take the other side off. How many joints are you looking to get off this then? Um, well, you get two off the best neck, two off the loins, um, without cutting either into steaks, but... Obviously you can cut them into steaks as you like, and then you can have as many meals out of it. Um, yet again, same the other side, looks perfect. Um, so there you've got one, two, three, four, five, six. You've got the two fillets there, and then you could use the shoulders, I could roll the shoulders, no problem at all, um, but I'd probably, um, I would probably use the shoulders for sausages, which is, which is my preferred choice. And then you can just slip down inside the ribs here. Just take these little bits of meat out. Um, and that can all go in the sausages. I mean, the same with a pig, the only thing you can't eat is the, is the squeak, so is that true? Oh, pretty much, yeah. I mean, you know, pigs' heads were used for brawn years ago, and the trotters, the trotters are, you know, a, a vital part of a lot of people's, you know, they, they have um, pigs' trotters uh, in soup, and, and they actually have eat pigs' trotters as well. Um, I've got to say, I'm, I've always been a great believer in that there's plenty of other things to eat rather than pig's feet, but um, what's skim milk for one is clotted cream for another. Right, so that's all done. Now we're going to just sort the four quarter meat out. So, basically we're going to cut in here. Do we get to the area of impact? Do you do any sort of checks as to whether you feel that the, the pig is healthy or how would you tell whether the... Yeah, the... yeah it's con purely conditioned. You can see there where the bullet went. Yes, but, but you, in its condition alone you'll be able to tell. Uh, you can check the liver, which I did. Uh, liver was perfectly healthy. And now you've just got blood damage in here, which 
won't look particularly good, wouldn't taste particularly good, um, and obviously bone fragments. So we try and take that out as much as possible. And I'm prepared to risk that sort of wastage for uh, for a good shot. You've now got the two shoulders, so you would cut that through there. Some people would use this as a as a bit of the fillet, which we can do on this particular occasion. Still got a bit of what they call under fillet there, and the same on this side. And then you have your shoulders, which we use for sausages. Are the shoulders traditionally used for sausages? Uh, no, no, you would use, it's just the same as a shoulder of pork. Um, but I use them for sausages because, um, you know, I, I want to uh, have as many sausages as possible for the shoots. And we use you know, all of the other, we use all of the other cuts for our roasting joints and steaks and that sort of thing. And then you have the shoulder blade comes here and we open it up this way. This can be done, this can be done with the, we used to have a boning, what we called a, a boning knife, um, which is a, a horseshoe shaped knife which would go up and down this particular bone that I'm holding on to at the moment. Um, and we used to do shoulders of lamb with that in the shop. Um, and where we used to do shoulders of lamb with it, you could, you know, then keep the piece of meat as one completely. So that's the main shoulder joint. And here's the shoulder blade, which we cut down through there. Is there, is there a way that you butcher, this could be deer or anything now, George, that has been shot? compared to something that's obviously been done to an abattoir? Uh, yeah, it's look, it depends on where the bullet, where the bullet's gone in, the amount of damage it's caused, um, you know, what you have to work with, whether you're, you know, whether you're looking at severe bruising or severe blood damage. Um, it's all relative to, to every particular animal. Uh, I mean, obviously the, the method of, of cutting the, the the animal up once you've got it to a certain stage stays the same, but if I shot, shoulder shot this animal, this both of these joints here would probably be useless. So, um, you know, but by placing the bullet properly, um, if you've got the opportunity, I mean, I know some people you know, would, would, would rather rely on a heart shot. I prefer to rely on a, a base of the head neck shot. Um, as I feel it, it does more, uh, more damage and, and creates a more instant death. Um, so, you know, for me, I, I'm, I'm winning both ways because that's where I want to place a bullet. And not only that, for me to eat what I'm shooting, um, it, it creates the least amount of damage possible on the carcass. As you can see, you've now got here, you've got a, a complete carcass that we've done and, and, the, and there's no damage to that at all apart from that small amount of blood damaged area that we had um, 
the small amount of blood damaged area that we had that we chucked away when we uh, when we cut the neck so I'll put that on there and just to finish off we've got the two breasts this is always where you cut your knuckles turn that over cut through there Do you roll it, or do you, um, again, is it? Uh, I, I, I would, I would, you know, we've got enough good joints there to last us for what we want with regards to, you know, eating wild boar. So I would, yet again, favour the sausages, um, which the guns absolutely love, and I, and I feel that when you're, you know, using the sausages on a shoot day um, and it's got a story it's like anything nowadays people a lot of a lot of the meat they want traceability with and you know a story and a background behind you know where it was and everything else and and and, and i can i can give that with wild boar sausages whereas i can't with a with a, a bought product and they do enjoy them even though Kate tries her hardest in the morning sometimes to burn them, um, we can you know, we can succeed. <laughs> so, just to finally finish off, move that over there. Move that over there. Move that over there. Right here we have a sausage, all of the sausage meat. So we've got the four quarter meat, both shoulders, both breasts, the lovely fleed. We've got uh, two very nice, very nice, what they would. If you were looking at lamb, they would call best ends. We've got two boned loins. Two boned loins here. You've got your fillet, which is perfect. And then you've got your two legs. And this is what the finished product will look like. It's a figure of eight knot. slowly for me yeah so the figure of eight knot is you go underneath you come out you go round underneath you go th through there hence that's the figure of eight and you go underneath and back over and in between tighten pull from that side and half hitch it off and that won't move so there on your leg you've obviously got a, a lovely joint and then here exactly the same scenario figure of eight knot again you're underneath and then if you start in the middle 
squeezes everything to the sides and then you can tighten the sides up. So it's one, two, Do that half pitch slowly as well for me. Through, just to explain it. So it's three, figure of eight to there, and you tighten it again so you've got tension, and then literally you you half hitch it there, and that won't move. And you would obviously do that with your full quarter meat. You do it with your hind quarter meat. I could roll the shoulder exactly the same, creating this thing. I would roll the loins exactly the same. I'm probably going to use these as stakes. Um, the, 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 just, just finishing off. I hate leaving an untidy area. So it's the last leg. And once again, half hitch in the middle. Start with. Pushes it up to the side. Two there, just do one more. Just go underneath through and if you do it properly, all your knots should be in a line. All your knots should be in a line and there is as minimal waste as possible um, and I, although I'm not earning a living from it now, I, um, you never forget and I think it's, uh, it's fantastic that I learnt a trade early in my life and I can still fall back on it.